Mr. Aguirre. Our board of directors to an individual or organization renowned in the world of sports and committed to the advancement of Hispanic Americans. This year, the NCLR board is proud to honor Henry J. Hank Aguirre, and for good reason. In the world of sports, his brilliant big league performances on the mound for the Indians, the Tigers, the Dodgers, and the Cubs are part of baseball's great history. The tall Mexican, as the sports writers named him, was loved by all, players and fans alike. Throughout his baseball career and to the present day, those marvelous characteristics of class, great humor, courage, and compassion shine like candles in the dark. Always a gentleman, Hank's skills kept him in the game for 25 years in which he distinguished himself as player, coach, and manager. For when his baseball career ended, Hank applied those marvelous skills, the disciplines, the drive, the motivation, combined with his relentless pursuit of equality toward helping his fellow Hispanics. With vision and hope, he started Mexican Industries a little over a decade ago in the heart of Detroit's Hispanic community. There were eight employees and three sewing machines. Today, Mexican Industries is one of the largest and fastest growing Hispanic-owned businesses in the United States with over 800 employees, 87% of which are Hispanic. Hank has never wavered on his commitment. He supports many programs and causes for the disadvantaged. Through his efforts, Mexican Industries employees are provided opportunities to upgrade skills, English fluencies, and educational levels from GEDs to graduate studies. He has never forgotten his roots or his pledge to his fellow Hispanic Americans. Henry J. Hank Aguirre, outstanding athlete, successful businessman, civic leader, and humanitarian. Henry, let me, let me change to something else, uh, because you and I ran into one another at the drugstore uh, right. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I, as I know, uh, most of the people in the Detroit area know that you're suffering from uh, prostate cancer. And you right. told me that uh, if we ever got a chance to talk on the air, that the one thing you wanted to tell people, particularly males who turn 35, is to, is to what? Uh, you, you mean to get exam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this prostate cancer thing is becoming a highly active thing amongst men over 40. And all I ask those guys out there over 40, go in there and get that PSA test once a year. It's a blood test. It's simple, and you detect it early in life. Uh, they'll, they'll give you a long, long term to live. What kind of treatment are you undergoing now, Hank? Uh, uh, right now, they're giving me a thing called Lupron. It's an injection uh, that's once a month, and it's mm -hmm. apparently controlling uh, as cancer grows. Uh, uh, you know, I think uh, we're all aware that testosterone is what fuels the cancer in the prostate. Um, uh, Lupron is controlling that growth, and hopefully it will for a number of years. I came out to pay my respects to you and to say thank you very much for making exciting things happen here in the city of Detroit. And I think it's just the beginning of what's going to occur. Hank Gary isn't through dreaming. He sees more positive things that can happen in Detroit. One of the things I like to see Archer do, or even Mayor Coleman Young, is knock the boarded up houses down, build light industrial space, bring jobs in the city, and that creates a big wheel that starts going. They pay taxes, you know. Uh, they have dollars in their pockets, and everything starts to go around again. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is hopefully just part of it. I don't know that anybody other than Hank Aguirre ever envisioned that we would be here today um, to, to, to dedicate a brand new facility and I think a, a new beginning for the city of Detroit. And it is so nice uh, to have uh, this opening on my watch as mayor of the city of Detroit. It is a wonderful marriage of a great corporation that has employed and will continue to employ so many of our citizens. I hope that you have a sense of excitement that I do. Uh, and thank, thank you for making all this happen. There's a lot of wonderful, wonderful uh, talent in this city that goes unused. There's a lot of wonderful land and resources and whatnot that has gone unused for a number of years. And I think as uh, 
Bob Copley came up with the word, uh, the spirit lives, the spirit shall live, and it's uh, being revived at this time. You're the ones that made this company and Hank's vision become a reality. Uh, this facility will not only enable us to continue to grow and to better serve our customers, but will also supply a significant number of inner city jobs. And may God, the Father of goodness, who commanded us to help one another as brothers and sisters, bless this new building with his presence. May the spirit of his mother Mary, under the patronage of Our Lady Guadalupe, always look kindly on all who enter here. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We made his mark in Detroit as a ball player and a businessman. This morning, Detroiters are mourning his death. Hank Aguirre died yesterday of prostate cancer at the age of 62. TV2's Bill Gallagher reports on Aguirre, a leader on and off the field. Tall Henry, Hank Aguirre. Hank Aguirre was a towering presence on the mound. The six foot four left-hander pitched for the Tigers from 1958 to 1967 and was popular on and off the diamond. Hank was, always had the one-liner, always, uh, always had the presence of mind to keep the club loose. I, I think that's what he will be most remembered for. Just a terrific guy. Aguirre once tried to buy the Tigers from former owner Tom Monahan. It's his ball club. He doesn't have to sell it. But I wish you would, and I'd like to own it. Hundreds of people gather today at Holy Redeemer Church to say their last goodbyes to Hank Aguirre, a man who truly made a difference in the city of Detroit. Not only did he earn respect on the baseball field, but also in the business world and among Detroit leaders. Channel 7's Eric Smith has more on this touching service. They came to say farewell at Holy Redeemer Church to one of their own, baseball people and business people. Many of them names you wouldn't know, but people whose lives were made better by a guy who cared very much about a lot of them. Hank Aguirre, who threw baseballs for the Tigers and then tried to improve things in his beloved Hispanic community, was honored and remembered there today. There were tears, of course, caresses, and a lot of happy thoughts from former teammates like Bill Freehan, Detroit Lion legend Joe Schmidt, and Mr. Baseball himself, Ernie Harwell. He was a real presence in the Tiger baseball, and even more so than that, a real presence in the community. And I think that's what we appreciate even more than his baseball ability. The fact that he came here and settled here, became a part of the community, made his contributions through Mexican, Mexican industries, and really was a, a vital part of this community, and we're certainly going to miss him in so many ways. Before the funeral mass began, the children of Holy Redeemer School, all much too young to remember the baseball pitcher named Hank Aguirre, lined the steps to the church sanctuary to honor the man they've grown to know who brought enthusiasm, respect, and jobs to their small corner of Detroit. Following services, Hank Aguirre's body was flown to California. Tomorrow, funeral services in San Gabriel, California at the mission where he will be buried. No, his name will not hang at Cooperstown, but you can ask anyone here. Hank Aguirre was truly a Hall of Famer. From Holy Redeemer, I'm Eric Smith, Channel 7 Action News, reporting. In this town, he's a Hall of Famer. Certainly. He will be missed. Everywhere. Our lives are uh, kind of worthless if the only thing that we have to look back on and hang our hat on is that we were an athlete. I think as people, we have a responsibility to our community, and he surely lived up to that. If you only knew all the stories, <laughs> and none of us can ever tell them publicly, but uh, Henry was a special spirit. There's a reason for everything, and we're, we aren't we aren't to know it. So uh, wherever Hank is, uh, if there is a place, I hope he's waiting for me because I want to see him again. The challenges are still out there for us to meet, that's for sure. But in meeting those challenges, I ask you to remember that we are, each of us, angels with just one wing. And we can only fly by embracing one another. Thank you very much. I have three hope words left, talking about hope and faith. I hope that most of you close your windows. Me quedan tres esperanzas, que cierren las ventanas. 
I hope that the food in the back that we're about to partake is blessed and we're going to have a good time and eat some food. Que la comida que, que vamos a compartir esté bien sabrosa. And I hope to see you again. Thank you. Y espero poder verlos a todos otra vez.